Very subtle, the tone of voice, the way he would breathe, how he would sound on the phone on his way home. I became so in tune. Everything in the house became about survival. It's like a dripping tap. The first drip won't kill you. It wears people down over time. The more doors you open, the more times you see you. It's everywhere. The day for me came when he picked up an ax and was talking about decapitating someone and quite possibly me. I think people really need to look at this as an epidemic. Women are, are being murdered and stalked and hunted in broad daylight. A lot of people still are under the misconception that domestic violence is only physical abuse. When I saw the description of coercive control, I went, oh my God. It was as if somebody had walked into my home and written down everything that was happening to me. One of the men in the group used the term guidance with a push. There's such a range of what makes up domestic violence. Controlling someone by limiting what finances they have available. So it can be, here's a credit card of $1,000 a month, darling. Um, it just comes with these conditions. Controlling what friends or family they can interact with. Anyone that was in my life that became a threat was immediately cut out by him. He was my reality. You'll have respondents who emotionally manipulate or wear down uh, victims gradually over time. I'm very outgoing, outspoken, I was very vivacious, and little by little after three years I became isolated. Right up to uh, significant violence in isolated incidents. The first time he ever attacked me, he strangled me. Now I've also learned that strangulation is a strong indicator for murder. How do they present themselves like ordinary people? You can't pick them externally. Generally, they present as intelligent and articulate. These men are very, very charming. My ex de facto husband was an athlete. He was physically strong. He was very good looking and very much in control of image management. He knew what to show me and he knew what to show the outside world. Often they're very different in public to what they are behind closed doors. So he wasn't this raving lunatic in front of everybody. Once it's behind closed doors, they can, they can turn into completely different people. Rape. My partner is my intimate partner and I was raped by him repeatedly. We've all been taught that rape is the guy behind the bushes. The most danger I was in was in my own home. The perpetrator was behind my closed door. At the end of the day, all the actions they commit are for the purpose of controlling. Where you exercise your will over another human being. It is all about them. They don't see the other. They don't consider the world of the other. They can come up with really good examples of how they coerce their partners. The first time he felt that I was angry with him, it was 11 o'clock at night. He's standing outside on the deck in a pool of blood. He had just sliced his head open. So my immediate response was, oh my God, you know, are you okay? And But what that did was he pulled me in now. I was the protector of his secrets. I was the protector of his demons. I was the gatekeeper from the world. Nobody knew him like I did. He was this really kind, sensitive human being who was just tormented. And I loved him so much I was going to help him overcome his torment. And then they put things in place in order to get what they, what they want. So if they don't want their partners to go out partying or clubbing for the night with their friends, they'll say, oh, come on, stay home. We haven't been together all week. We'll just have you and me time. On face value, that sounds like a really nice thing. It's the deliberateness of it. She has a benchmark where she knows there's going to be costs to that. They will manipulate situations, manipulate the mind, manipulate the story. And so gaslighting is, is when the abuser will use information that you see as fact and they will dismiss it and make it sound like you're crazy or your perception is off or you're imagining things. And when that's done over a period of time, you are worn down psychologically and you don't fully comprehend what's happened to you. You've got to appreciate that these uh, victims of violence have been controlled 
for such a lengthy period of time that they don't have the confidence within themselves to, to stand up to that person. Look, if he came up to me the first time that I met him and he said, by the way, I just want you to know, we're gonna have a great couple weeks and then I'm going to become violent. I'm going to control your world. I'm gonna isolate you from everyone and I'm going to end up trying to kill you. Do you think I would have a second conversation with this guy? Absolutely not. And that's not the way coercive control works. It undermines, it's white anting, it just eats a person from the inside out. We lose sense of reality when you're in that kind of an environment. You don't know what danger is because you're immersed in danger every single day. The day he picked up the ax, um, he said, we're gonna go for a ride. He coerced me into the vehicle. He drove me to the creek in Corumban. We got out, he had me in a headlock and we walked down the wooden boardwalk. And in that moment, I accepted that that's where I was going to be murdered. And I remember thinking, the water's really clear. If I'm gonna die, this'll be a pretty place to die. I had absolutely nothing in me that was doing anything to protect myself. We call it the fog. It's fear, the obligation, the guilt is what can keep a woman stuck in the relationship. So the day he picked up an ax, the fog that I experienced, that image is what snapped me out of it. Will he ever think he's wrong? Absolutely not. To this day, he thinks he's victimized. Will they change? When will they change? Do they change? Every man that has ever been in our groups would say that violence and coercion and abuse is not okay. But then they give themselves all these reasons. If she didn't do this, if she was just like this, I wouldn't have to be like this. I, I use the term minimization, denial and blame. That's how he thinks. Do you feel your world shrinking? Does it feel like you're being manipulated or taken advantage of? Do you feel pushed? Do you feel like you're unable to breathe? Don't wait or hope for change. There's no, it's gonna get better. They're going to see the error of their ways. Now get out. Don't try to, to rationalize this. I did that. It almost cost me my life. I, I don't know, you know, we're talking about deep-seated things. How do you change that like this? We as men need to pay attention to what we do and why we believe we have the right to do it. Their partners are somebody's sister, somebody's daughter, somebody's mother. They're a whole person. If we could change that story, we can change the world.